Unless you've been living under a rock these past two weeks, you've probably heard the great news that two of the leading vaccine contenders for COVID-19 have had some amazing initial results. The joint effort by BioNTech and Pfizer announced on November 9th that their vaccine candidate has a greater than 90% efficacy. And just this week, on November 16th, Moderna announced that their vaccine candidate has a 94.5% efficacy. I'm not an expert on vaccines, but based on everything I've been reading, this seems like an absolutely major success that we should all be celebrating. And it's because I'm not an expert in vaccines that I'm not going to discuss the differences between these two vaccines, or how they'll be distributed, or even how likely they are to have side effects. There are a bunch of amazing YouTubers putting out great content just on this. Instead, since my expertise is on data, I'm going to help you understand what those efficacy numbers actually mean. And I'll fully admit that when I first read the news stories about these vaccine candidates, I did not interpret those values correctly at all. And I'm guessing neither did you. Welcome to Data Demystified. I'm Jeff Gallick, and if you stick around, I'm going to debunk what I think is the most common incorrect interpretation of those efficacy numbers, and then I'll explain to you what they actually mean. When I first saw 90 and 94.5% efficacy, I immediately thought that the interpretation of those values was that if I'm vaccinated, the likelihood of me getting infected with COVID-19 after being exposed to it dropped by 90 or 94.5%, depending on which vaccine I got. In other words, once vaccinated, if someone sprayed COVID-19 in my face, I'd be only about 10 or 5% likely to actually get infected. That seems sensible when we talk about efficacy. In other contexts, that's exactly what efficacy means. If I have an antibacterial soap that claims to kill 99% of germs, we correctly interpret that to mean that of all the bacteria on our hands, the soap will kill 99% of them. It's 99% effective at killing bacteria. If I have a manufacturing process that detects 95% of all defects before a product is completed, that means that it is stopping 95% of all the problems from going through to the consumer. It's 95% effective at stopping defects. If I have an algorithm that recommends songs for you to listen to based on your preferences, and that algorithm is 90% effective, that means that 90% of the time it recommends songs you'll actually like. It's 90% effective at predicting your musical tastes. And yet that is not at all what is meant by efficacy with vaccines or drugs of any kind. In the medical testing world, efficacy has a totally different meaning. When drug companies test vaccines, they conduct double-blind, randomized controlled trials. Basically, they randomly assign some people to get a vaccine and some people to get a harmless saline injection, otherwise called a placebo. Neither the doctor or nurse administering the shot, nor the study participant, know which one they're getting, and only when the study is completed do the results become known. This is absolutely the best way to test vaccines, and the hope is that the people who get the vaccine injection experience far less disease than those who got the placebo. If that's the case, we can conclude that the vaccine is effective. Note that when I say effective here, I'm referring to the relative effectiveness of the placebo to the vaccine. And that's actually what is meant by effectiveness in these vaccine trials. To unpack this, let's take a closer look at the data that was in both of the press releases from these two companies. Though, before we do that, it's worth pointing out that these are not peer-reviewed results, and we don't actually have all the data to analyze. What we have is just what the companies put out. Now, I'm not suggesting that there's anything sketchy going on here, but it is the case that we can't thoroughly vet everything just yet. That's what the FDA will do when they consider whether to approve these vaccines for emergency use. Anyway, BioNTech and Pfizer had 38,955 people receive two doses of the vaccine when they released their preliminary results. Of those roughly 39,000 people, 94 were infected with COVID-19. Critically though, of those 94 people, 85 were in the placebo condition and 9 were in the vaccine condition. In other words, you were far less likely to get infected if you got the actual vaccine than if you got the harmless saline injection. So where does 90% efficacy come from? It comes from comparing the number of people infected across the two groups. Of the 94 total infections, 85 were in the placebo condition, and so we take 85 and divide it by 94 and get 90.4%. That's the efficacy number they're reporting. For Moderna, it's the same story. Somewhere around 30,000 people received two doses of their vaccine, or two doses of the placebo, and of those, 95 were ultimately infected with COVID-19. 90 were in the placebo condition, and 5 were in the vaccine condition. 90 divided by 95 gets you 94.7%, which is the efficacy number reported. To be clear, this is absolutely the standard way to report efficacy in vaccine trials, and yet I find this very confusing because it just doesn't align with how I think about efficacy. When I hear 90% efficacy, I think that I'm only 10% likely to get infected once I get the vaccine, but that's actually not quite right. That 90% doesn't say anything about how likely you are to get infected after exposure. Instead, one way to look at it is to think about how many people 
of those who received the vaccine actually got infected. If we do that, we see that for the BioNTech and Pfizer vaccine, 9 out of about 19,477 people, or just 0.04%, were infected with COVID. We can compare that to the control group, where 85 out of 19,478 people were infected, or 0.43%. In other words, we can think that our likelihood of infection actually goes down by a full order of magnitude, from about 0.4% to 0.04%, and you get basically the same result for the Moderna vaccine. But even that conclusion isn't enough to match the intuition for effectiveness that I think we all want. And that's because we don't know what populations the people studied came from. As in, we need to know the baseline level of disease in each of the areas where these companies tested their vaccines. If the infection rate in those areas were very high, then the vaccine seems to be highly effective, at least in the more intuitive sense of effectiveness. If the disease spread was relatively low, then it's a lot harder to say. The point is that yes, we should absolutely celebrate these amazing medical breakthroughs. And once safety is fully assessed and verified, we should likely all line up to get vaccinated so that we can end the horror of this global pandemic. And yet, when we do that, we should be fully informed about what the data backing these vaccines tell us. When we hear amazing results like 90 and 94.5% effectiveness, we need to understand what is being described is the ratio between the vaccinated and placebo group infection rates, and not how effective the vaccine is at actually preventing you from getting infected with COVID-19. Again, this isn't an indictment of vaccines, far from it. It's a call to action for you as the consumer of this information to make sure you fully understand what you're seeing. If the FDA vets these vaccines and confirms that they are as effective and safe as they claim, they will reduce the likelihood of anyone getting the vaccine from getting infected with COVID-19. But how much will that likelihood decrease isn't 90 or 94.5%. We actually don't know exactly how much it will reduce infection likelihoods, but assuming they are safe, any significant reduction is likely to help billions of people around the world. In closing, I wish all of you to be safe, healthy, and diligent in fighting this disease while we wait for these vaccines to be fully vetted and distributed. Finally, if you like what you saw, I'd really appreciate it if you could take a moment to like this video, subscribe to this channel, and click that little bell icon so you don't miss out on any new content I put out. Thanks so much for watching.